Right, this is an unboxing for the Blue Yeti USB microphone. First off, the box is rather snazzily designed. It's got um, some odd motifs of all kinds of different Yetis, which I think are meant to represent musicians and the like. So yeah, obviously a box that's meant to appeal to <clears throat> mass audience and everything. Opening up, we've got a USB cable, which will be to connect the mic to a computer. Little um, instruction manual, and then the mic itself. Now the box is actually rather heavy, and just for size comparison's sake, there's an iPhone 3GS, and it's got the side just there. So it's a reasonably large box. Okay. Lots of polystyrene. And a little bit of polystyrene on the bottom just there. Let's the box out of the way over here. Okay, and this is the microphone itself. The reason, part of the reason for the microphone's weight is the stand which comes with it, which I actually quite like because it gives you immediately a way of putting it on the desk that's not going to be pulled over or moved around too easily, which is always a bit of a pain when you get a microphone and you have a cheap little mic stand or something, it's not really ideal for for recording on a desk by wires are going over and stuff. So, the stand itself is the bulk of the weight. You can remove the microphone itself from the stand, just undoing these, and those also allow you to tighten it up to keep it in any position that you so choose. If you did want to remove it from the stand just here, there's a thread adapter on the bottom which is uh, for um, a microphone stand and you could put it on a microphone stand. Obviously you probably need a long, longer USB cable if you were going to do that. So taking around the microphone a bit, <clears throat> on the front we have the mute and volume control for the headphones. On the back we've got the pattern selection. Now this is actually a multi-pattern microphone. Inside there are three microphone capsules and by combining various um, setups within that you can get different polar patterns. So for example, if I switch it all the way over here, it would be a figure eight pickup pattern, which would mean that it picks up in a lobe coming out like this and a lobe coming out like that, literally like a figure eight. Re strong rejection to either side when you're in that pattern, but it picks up the front and the back. Now that's useful if you're interviewing someone perhaps and you wanted to be able to record them whilst looking at them and them looking at you. Figure eight pattern would be very nice for that. And it's also quite nice for various instrument miking setups where you might want strong rejection to the sides um, or some more complicated mic setups where you would um, perhaps want to get some room sound as well as the close mic sound of your instrument. That could be quite nice for that. Next one is a cardioid pickup pattern, which basically means heart shaped. And that again comes out in a lobe like this. So it's got a little bit of pickup to the back and then it comes out around the front. So mainly in front and you'll get a proximity boost with that as well, which will make your voice sound all rich and low. Next we have omnidirectional, which as the name suggests, should be uniform throughout, so literally it'll pick up evenly in all directions, although more often than not, there is a slight variation in the pattern for that one. Finally, we have stereo, which if you're <clears throat> recording a band or a gig or several instrumentalists together or anything with a larger soundstage, even possibly just a single instrument, although one of the other pickup patterns might be more suitable, that will give you an instant stereo sound, two channels, and it will probably, probably be the best um, polar pattern for that. On the back we've got a gain control for the mic, and that's all relatively easily accessible, although I guess if you had the microphone in a weird position it would be difficult to get to it. The microphone itself is rather solid, the buttons and all of the um, pattern selection knobs are a little bit plasticky and they're not, um, no, they're definitely not metal and they're not attached to the body as firmly as uh, perhaps I would like, but I'm sure that it's still very reliable. THX certified, whatever that means. And on the bottom, headphone, USB, and I've already said about the mic stand adapter just there. Let's just have a quick glance at the manual. Yes, sure enough, it gives you a little bit of information about the um, curves for the various microphones and what 
frequencies they are strong and weak at, as well as a bit of an explanation of how you can record with this microphone. I'm very sure that's pretty, pretty basic and most people will be able to work it out quite well. I have already tested this and you can plug it straight into a Mac to record. Obviously that's um, quite a popular way of doing it. I think that Blue are quite well associated with Apple. And you could also um, plug it into an iPad if, um, if you have one. It does at the moment require that you plug it through a powered USB hub because um, of a change in uh, the firmware, I think it was iOS 4.2, broke the universality of this. Before you could just plug it straight into the Camera Connect kit and it would power up, but now it will give you a, this device uses too much power warning signal. But if you go through a powered hub, then you don't get any problems. You can plug that straight in and record with it into your iPad. And I've checked it does receive the stereo sound. And if you're using something like Fire, it's very, very simple to record with. So that is the Blue Yeti USB microphone. And I'll be doing a test of this in a later video. I'll probably put a link at the end once this is this is all finished.